What is good everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a look at 10 sneakers that you should not buy in 2019. Now, this is a little bit different from the typical video because typically I show you guys what's a good value, what to buy, under $100, under $250. But today, we're going the opposite route. We have a bunch of sneakers here that honestly, I didn't think I would have you know, in my studio in 2019. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, show you some of the things. This can be broken down into a few different categories. Obviously, my opinion on shoes can differ from yours. This is just my opinion, but I'm gonna break it down into a few different categories. Sneakers not to buy because of value. Sneakers that you might think will resell but they probably will not or they're not already so shoes not to buy because of the value if they're not gonna hold it the next category is going to be shoes that I wouldn't buy in 2019 because their sting is falling off basically they were hype at one point but now it would just not be smart to buy them because the value is gonna continue to go down the next category from that will really strictly be based off of looks I'm trying to you know show you guys some sneakers that I just would not buy because I just don't really like how they look. And then I think the last category will just be a designer sneaker that I think is just ridiculous amount of money. So value of money, how they hold their value, all different kinds of stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and show you guys that here in a minute. Now this video is brought to you by Reshuvenator. If you don't know Reshuvenator, Reshuvenator makes the best sneaker cleaning products in my personal opinion. I've cleaned shoes that I've completely destroyed, jumped in mud puddles, everything like that. And they're perfectly fine now. This is their water and stain repellent spray. Basically you spray the outside of the shoe, it protects it from rain, other stains, or they have things like their sneaker wipes. Now, if you use code Harrison on Reshubinator.com, it'll get you 10% off. There'll be a link down below, and thank you to Reshubinator for sponsoring this video. We're also going to be doing a giveaway on one of these pairs of shoes here. Even though I might not like them, you guys might like them. Wow, my voice just cracked. After I start opening a few of these up and showing you guys, that's where we'll get into some details on how you can win this. Okay guys, it's time to go ahead and show you what shoes I do not think that you should be buying in 2019. Again, this is all opinion, and if you guys wanna buy these, that's completely fine. These are some of the shoes that I just think for certain aspects I wouldn't buy. Now the first shoe up for that is going to be a Jordan 1 Mid. They've been coming off a lot of different versions of this shoe recently and the lows and the highs. So there are so many options on the market that I don't think the mid is the route to go as far as looks. Now the specific colorway that I chose was one that I do think applies to this and that is the shattered backboard colorway which they came out with a few different ones. Now, if you guys don't know the Shattered Backboard, it is a classic sneaker that has really good quality and that's why every compares Jordan 1 quality to that sneaker. Now, they came out with the lows recently and the mid. Now, these aren't that exact sneaker. These are sitting in store, you can go get them. But in my opinion, I would go for the lows even over the highs in this opinion for this colorway right now because of the price. The lows are $90, the highs are about seven, $800. The mid to me just doesn't look as good with a pair of jeans, some shoes. Now I'm gonna put this right shoe on right here and you guys can kind of see as I'm talking about it, how it looks. So I have the low here to compare as well. The colors are a little bit different. Now I also have an on feet shot going right now where you guys can see what it looks like on feet. The mid to me just doesn't have that same look as the low or the high. I feel like it's choosing between the one or the two. Now the mids are $110, which is not a bad price. The lows are 90 bucks and I think these look better personally. They have the orange toe box, they have the black swoosh, whereas this has the orange swoosh. I just think this is such a better colorway and I just think the lows look so much better. So I would say stay away from the mids in 2019, go for the lows or go for the highs because both the lows are available at most of your foot lockers and stuff. So it's not like you just spend the 800 for the highs. Next shoe up is going to be the Fear of God Essentials Converse. Now I'm a fan of the Essentials line. I actually think that the pieces are very well cut and I really like the style of them. Now when Fear of God announced they're coming out with the Converse with the Paxson collab, I was like, that's gonna be amazing. I saw the pictures, I thought it was pretty decent. I really like how they wrap the laces around the back. But to me, this is too simple of a shoe to spend upwards of $180 to $250 on. So as you can see on the on foot shot, the shoe does not look bad. They do look a little bit bigger, but in my opinion, there are so many better options for that price point out there. You can go ahead and buy a pair of Converse for about $80. I've seen some on sale for $40 that have a very similar look. It's just like an off-white cream color and then a black toe and multiple laces. I think if these would have came out right at the beginning when Fear of God came out with like the Vans, these would have done a lot better. But to me, it is too plain of a shoe to be at $200. 
$100. It's just a Converse with a canvas and some leather. For me, I like the shoe. If the price point was at $80, $90 or around the retail price, which is I believe 110, that's not bad. But again, they sold out and they're going for about double. The colorway is not bad. It reminds me of the Fear of God Vans, those high tops that came out. It's a very similar silhouette, but I wish I would have put a little bit more branding on there. I know that that's not really the thing of essentials, like if they would've just wrapped essentials around the back here, or put essentials on the side, they would've been better, but that's my opinion on these. I think they look good on feet though, not my pick for 2019. I wanted to jump in here and tell you guys details about giveaway of these shoes. Now, I'm going to be giving away one pair of these. Now, one that might not be in there is these off-whites, because I think I'm gonna return those, because they're $800, there's no need for me to keep them. Probably not the 750s either. So, off-white and 750s, not eligible, but out of the eight other shoes, if you guys would win one pair of these, which one would you want? Rules for that giveaway are one, you have to subscribe to the channel. Number two, you have to follow me on Instagram. Number three, comment down below which shoe and your Instagram username. Now, for the giveaways in the future and this giveaway now, whenever I pick the winner, I'm gonna leave a comment on this video after it's been picked. So in two weeks time, I'll be leaving a comment on this video. So if you don't see it in a future video, you can always come back to this one and see who won. Next shoe up is one that did recently just come out and they're sold out online for the most part, but in store they had them locally. These are the Yeezy Desert Boots. They most recently came out. Now, the reason I say not to buy these in 2019 is one, the resale price is not worth it in my opinion. I'm the type of person that likes highs or lows. I'm not a fan of like that mid look. And these, the sizing on these guys, I'll tell you guys is really bad. This is a shoe that you have to go at least a full size up. The 11, literally, I, I can't even fit it on. I'm gonna do it, but. Now this is a shoe that I would not say is a resale shoe. You can see it on my feet. To me, it's not, I'm too skinny of legs to buy. So if you're a skinnier type, I would not buy a shoe like this because it is a big, chunky shoe. It's a mid. And it literally looks like a Yeezy 500 with a, like a Yeezy 500 mid, basically. It's got like the same lower part, except this is obviously a little bit chunkier, a little different. This is one that I just would stay off the radar just because one, resale value is not gonna be there. If you're going to buy these, buy them because you like how they look. Don't buy them for resale. And I know a lot of people like these and I think they look good on certain people, but me, they do not. So I'm gonna be avoiding these this year. I mean, how they look on my feet, it just doesn't seem like it's it. For these, I'd probably stay away, but that's my opinion. So we're gonna be shifting angles for these next shoes. We're gonna show you the final shoes but while we're moving i thought let's go ahead and show you guys harrison neville's arcade the key master and see if i can win my serena william blazers back because i can't wear them until i win them out so we're gonna put in a dollar and uh hope that i can win if you guys didn't see i bought this key master straight up the video has almost 400,000 views which is crazy but uh let's see if i can win this ready if you want to know how this works check out that video i might be completely off this is not even gonna do it all right, I'm gonna do one more try because that was bad. I'm trying to wear my blazers this weekend, so it'd be nice to, you know, win them out. Ready for it, ready for it, ready for it. Bow, let's go. We got the blazers back and they're stuck. Oh, luckily, we're not at an arcade. Oh, there they go. I was gonna say, luckily we're at an arcade. If I really wanted my shoes, I could just do that. Isn't this crazy having a key master in my freaking studio? So next up are going to be three shoes based off of their value. Holding their value, resell, and that is these three here. All are Adidas actually. So the first one is going to be a pair of the Pharrell Human Race Trail Edition. Now, this is a shoe that two years ago, if this released, it would be going for hmm, thousand bucks, $1,500. They had these plus three other colorways sitting at Adidas. And actually, I think the retail price is too much to pay because I've seen these go for 40, 50% off at some of the end of the season sales in different colorways. This one, I just think this is a really beautiful colorway. All black, you got the black boost and a gum bottom. Guys, in the prime of Adidas, this shoe would have sold for so much. Now I'm gonna show you what they look like on feet. I don't think they look bad. I think it's a good shoe to wear with some socks. So bear in mind with me wearing these, I'm wearing Nike high socks. Probably not the best combo. I would not wear it like that. It's just crazy to me that the OG of these are still going for a lot of money, but they made a lot of fake now there are so many colorways readily available like the back of this this actually looks really cool i like the way that that looks the trail is a good shoe but again this shoe i would wait until end of the season because some of the pharrell hue shoes that have come out they're not exactly the trails they're like the uh something boost one of them are like 50 percent off on adidas got to make this clear but i would actually wear the shoe i think it is a good looking shoe but if you're buying it for resale i don't think that's the move because previously human races have done well but these are reselling for about retail right now so it's not the best to do next shoe up is going to be an og this is one of the most ogs and i've actually never owned a pair of these. I feel like I have not even gotten a pair of these in a mystery box, and I wish I would have back in the day. So OG Yeezys are kind of, in my opinion, out of the picture as far as holding their value. The values are kind of dropping. Unless it's a turtle dove, Yeezy 350. So we have a Yeezy 750 
in the chocolate colorway. Check those out right there. I've never had a pair of 700s, 750s. I wish I did. Back in the day, like I tried everything in my power to get them. I just would not pay that $1,000, $2,000 resale. This has the original receipt from 2016 for $350 in Miami Beach. So I picked these up at a local store. These are dead stock, which is crazy. These are three years old and they're dead stock, which I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna wear these because resale value. When these were prime popularity, a dead stock pair of these would go for 900, 1200. Now you can find pairs on Grail all day for 300 bucks, 350. Now finding out if these are legit is kind of harder. F legit checking these older pairs. It's easier than nowadays, but it's still a pretty hard task. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my right foot and uh, show you guys what it looks like. Ah, this is crazy. I've never owned a pair of these. That's so crazy to think about. I might've just fell in love with these. These look sick. It's fall time. These are kind of like Travis ones. I might pull back on something. So the reason I say not to buy these 2019 is because the resale value. They're not really holding their value as much anymore. A dead stock pair of these is like six, $700. It's not holding it that well. Anything besides the OG gray colorway, as far as the 350s go, it's tough because you can get any of the 350 V2s, not any of them. You can get a good chunk of them for like two to $300. Whereas some of those OG pairs are going for four or 500. Putting these on actually just sparked a little bit in me because I never owned a pair of these. And I'm like, wow, they kind of look really good. So we'll see what happens with these, but I ended up paying $700 for these, which is a good chunk for an older shoe like this. And I don't think I'll be able to get that money out of it because they're selling for three, 400 bucks. OG Yeezys in 2019, I don't think are the best investment, but if you guys just love this silhouette, like, I really just love this silhouette and just really would wear the shoe, I would buy. Investment, no, to wear, definitely. It's a good time in the market to buy them if you're gonna wear them because the prices are low. The next shoe up is going to be one that I think can go in this category as well as the shoes that I don't necessarily prefer the look of. Now that is the Yeezy 700, the most recent colorway that I'm not even sure the actual name of. That is Yeezy 700 Magnet colorway. So the reason I'm talking about Yeezy 700s in resale is every Yeezy 700 that's dropped since the OGs at this point is pretty much sitting at retail, which is $300, very high retail, and that's why. Or it is sitting a little bit under retail. There's some pairs you can get for under retail. This is the most recent pair that's going for almost retail again. And I, this colorway, I feel like it's trying to be the OG colorway with a little bit of a twist to see maybe if that would spark it. It doesn't do it for me. I think the OG is the best colorway out of all of them. It holds its value pretty good. It's going for about four to $500, might even be more than that. And they just dropped too many 700s to where the value of these is not gonna be sticking there. Anymore. So I really like how they look on feet. Actually, the silhouette of the shoe is good, but this specific colorway is what I'm not a fan of. The colors are just kind of weird to me. And again, when we're talking about values, the 700s, it's the value. They're too expensive for what they are. If they were a $200 shoe even, I would say 180. They would be a really good shoe that I think would sell more. But the fact that they're 300 and they drop a colorway every three weeks or two or month, whatever, that's $300 every time. They dropped one, they dropped like two colorways in two weeks, I think a few months back. There's 300 each and it's like, how many times am I gonna spend $300 on the same shoe? Like there's not much being switched up. So that's where I feel on these. These are the newest colorway that I didn't even realize dropped. There's so many coming out. I just saw pictures of it. But Yeezy 700s, go for the OG in my opinion. If you're gonna spend 300, 350 bucks, save a little bit more and get the OG version in my opinion. Next shoe up is going to be one that is actually an athlete shoe. This is a Neymar Jr. Nike Shock. Nike Shocks is very surprising to me that these are back in 2019. They're kind of back, kind of not. It's a weird thing. So I'm seeing a lot more of people wearing these. Now the one shoe of these that I think is doing really well is the Comme des Garcons Nike Shocks. I think those are a little bit out there and different. I personally wouldn't wear them because they're a little bit too out there. I don't mind the look of that one, but guys, I literally had four pairs of Nike Shocks in elementary school. This was the shoe to wear in elementary school and it is 2019 and they're coming back. But this is a, a newer one that came out that I thought would be interesting just to show you guys since it is a Neymar shoe. I don't know, I just get a weird vibe from these. They're not that comfortable in my opinion. And if anything, this colorway I like, but it's just the Nike Shock silhouette in general that I'm talking about. And this one goes for about 150 bucks. Next shoe up is going to be a pair of Converse that I don't think I need to say much. Are you ready for it? And here we go, the Converse high tops. Need I say more? I'm just kidding though, really, this is a crazy shoe. If you're doing, actually I just thought about it, if you have the Louis Vuitton bag, the Louis Vuitton backpack and the iridescent, this would actually be perfect. This is literally like the same thing, but this is such a crazy silhouette of a sneaker. Reminds me of the Air Mags, honestly. This is, if you're trying to be crazy for a music video or something, I think this is the shoe. But that iridescent, for some reason, I'm seeing a really a lot lately, and this matches that LV backpack. I would like to see somebody make a custom out of the actual LV backpack and make a pair of shoes. 
shoes. So as I just put these on and look at them more, I honestly think that these might be inspired by the Louis Vuitton sneaker that they came out with with Virgil. Virgil started creating these silhouettes of a shoe that are a very high top. I just realized this is like the exact same look here and then the iridescent. That might be a conspiracy theory. They might be trying to take everything and put this iridescent on, take that silhouette, because it looks very similar, like very similar now that I look at it. So what do you guys think? You think they look good on feet? These are crazy. A little bit too high top for me. That's why I didn't buy those LB ones whenever I first saw them, but Converse Express High. Impress High. Next sneaker up is going to be a Fila, which is very popular, I would say, in the blogger world. My fiance is a blogger, and she uh, wanted these for a long time. So this is Fila's take on a chunky dad shoe for 2009. 19. In my opinion, they're a little bit retro and kind of remind me of like the uh, Air Monarchs. I could see why they're popular. They're, these are only 40 bucks. They're on sale. The Disruptor 2 logo tape. It does remind me of like a Tommy Hilfiger-esque sneaker, but this is one that I feel like is a little bit too chunky. It's probably something that I wouldn't wear. A lot of people do wear these though, and I think you can pull these off if you have the right body type. But for my body type, I just don't think they mesh that well. Last sneaker up is going to be one from Virgil. And this is a Actual off-white, not Nike collaboration, $815 retail. He's been coming out with some wild stuff and these kind of actually look like those Fila's. This is an insane shoe. Look how chunky, look how massive, has good quality materials. This is the new off-white stuff. Off-white has been going for that kind of crazier look of shoes. That bottom looks like it's out of a space movie. Like these could be like moon shoes. $815, that is an expensive shoe. I can see where the high-end fashion world would wear these. I could see that honestly, but for me, for $800, that's a hard one to, it does remind me of like Gucci's coming out with very similar shoes as well. The, every of these designer companies is just going for outlandish stuff. And I think it's gonna be harder and harder to, you know, keep up with making it crazier. Cause like, look at that, that honestly looks like an alien shoe. This is what they look like on feet as you guys can see. The quality is always there with Off-White. And I don't judge anybody for trying to go outside the boundaries and especially for in the designer world, that's what, you know, thrives there. Days are absolutely crazy. They've come out with a lot of cool shoes for Off-White mainline. But again, this is the main line. This is not the Nike collaborations and 815 bucks, very expensive. All right guys, so here are all the shoes laid out. Now, if I had to pick shoes that I would wear, like obviously I'm telling you guys, these aren't the best to buy in 2019, but there are some that I would keep and I'll show you guys those pairs now. After doing this video, I'm, I would like to keep these. I might actually wear these. For me, the value, I'm gonna lose a lot of value on because they're dead stock and that's like the highest the value is gonna be on them. So if I wear them, they're gonna go down a lot. Another one is probably these human races. They honestly look pretty good on feet and they're pretty readily available. They had a vault colorway actually at the local mall that we went to. Other than that, there these are a lot of these are hard to justify as far as the prices go. Like if these were retail, I'd probably keep these. The mids, again, I'd go for the lows. So if you guys want to win any of these, make sure you enter that giveaway and uh, good luck to you guys. I think that's going to wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed, please leave a like down below. I'll see you guys next time. This is Harrison.